Welcome to Essible Hibbery. I'm Hannah Hart, and welcome to Edible History, the show where we bake for old time's sake. Today, we're slicing into the history of the red velvet cake. It seems like the past few years have seen a red velvet explosion. But where and when do these colorful cakes come from? Since I haven't read too much on this cake, I'm talking with Stephen Schmidt, a food writer, researcher, and member of the Culinary Historians of New York. Stephen, thank you for being here on Edible History. Today we're talking about the history behind the red velvet cake. Can you tell me a little bit about the history behind this cake? Multicolored cakes became very popular right after the Civil War. There was a certain aesthetic that was going on. You can see it in interiors of rooms. That kind of carried on into cake. That idea of a multicolored, multi-layered cake is European, but it was a kind of an underground impulse. Actually, it wasn't terribly popular. It was a kind of obscure cake. Oh. That's what's interesting about red velvet cake is that all of a sudden it exploded onto the scene and now everybody's making it. So it's only recently become popular because it's, it's kind of ubiquitous now. You see it everywhere. There's red velvet everything now. Red velvet cookies, red velvet muffins. Red velvet cake is the avocado toast of cakes. So who would have been making these uh, fancy frivolous cakes? Uh, these cakes would have been made by middle and upper middle class housewives. These were cakes that were brought out at parties, gatherings of women, sewing clubs, tea parties, that sort of thing, more of something for an occasion. Can you tell me a little bit about the recipe we'll be making today? This is from Mrs. Lincoln's Boston Cookbook, published in 1883. There were a lot of ways of uh, getting a red color. Your cake is with cochineal, which is made with a Mexican bug. Did they step on a bug and it was red and they thought, oh my God, I'm gonna put that in a cake. You see references to cochineal in English recipes going back to the 17th century and possibly earlier. Well, we'll see if making this cake turns out to be a piece of cake. Wish me luck, Stephen. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> Today's recipe for Harlequin cake comes from Mrs. Lincoln's Boston cookbook. Our first step in making our cake involves the reddening. To get the red color, we'll be using cochineal, which is a type of Mexican bug. When I walked over to the table, I thought this was straight up peppercorn. These bugs are what gives the cake its pinkish red color. You know, normally when we have something I've never seen before, I taste it right away. I do not feel compelled to do that. Step number one, we're gonna turn on our heat and add our cochineal. Wow! That is starting to change color right away. Look at that, it's almost a fuchsia. You know, you could have told me it was a dried berry and I would have believed you. Next, we'll be adding our alum. And lastly, our cream of tartar. Beautiful. Quick little stir. That's a pretty color for a cake. Now, we just let this cook for 25 minutes. Ooh. 25 minutes later, our bug juice has this beautiful, rich fuchsia color. The next step in our recipe calls for salt of tartar. That was an early leavener that we can't really get our hands on today, nor do we want to because there are some slight safety precaution concerns. Instead, we're gonna be using a standard substitute, baking soda. Dee dee dee, baking soda. Give it a little stir a whirl. And last but not least, our sugar. I wonder how much of the color is gonna get diluted. I really hope it stays this vibrant, almost fuchsia color. Now that our sugar is completely dissolved, we're gonna turn off the heat and bottle our precious, precious food coloring. Here's our bottle, pretty. Here's our funnel, also pretty. If you're a Hannah, you're prone to spilling, but if you spill any of this, it'll stain. Good luck. We're going to very carefully ladle it into our bottle. We've got bugs. We've got a questionably dangerous salt of tartar. I feel like I'm making a potion right now. <laughs> okay, we'll get this last little bit. All right, our last bit of bug juice has been bottled and boy, is it beautiful. Now it's time to make our cake batter. So. First step, creaming the butter. To do that, we're gonna be using butter, sugar, and our egg yolks. Butter, and our sugar, and three egg yolks. 
Beautiful. Now we cream together, which basically just means mix your butter with this stuff. But they call it creaming together because they like having a different word for things. And voila, the butter is creamed. Next, we add the milk. Cute, yum. Beautiful, yum. Now we move on to our dry ingredients. First things first, we add a little bit of flour, a little bit more flour. Now, some baking soda and more cream of tartar. Okay, beautiful, okay, there you go, there you go. Now this is really starting to look like cake batter. And last but not least, our egg whites. Rejoin your yolky brethren. Now we're gonna divide our batter into four equal parts. Our next step says, have two parts the color of the dough. Color the third with two squares of unsweetened chocolate. We've got our melted chocolate right here. Color the fourth with pink coloring and bake each part in a Washington pie plate. Why not? Chocolat. Oh yeah, baby. Mmm, unsweetened and bitter as night. Last but not least, our bug juice. We're only adding a tablespoon because this is pretty bright. Now we mix it together. Wow, look at that vibrant pink. Now we move our batters into our pans. Good old Mrs. Lincoln definitely has some instructions about baking in general. Cake is baked when it shrinks from the pan and stops hissing. Our batters are in our pans and now we're ready to take them off to bake. I'll just do this in waves. Our next step is to make our lemon jelly. Before I do this, I'd like to shed a little light on what type of person Mrs. Lincoln was. Though we didn't know her directly, let's just say Mrs. Lincoln is the type of person who left no stone unturned and wanted to make sure that people knew exactly what they were doing. I'd love to read to you Mrs. Lincoln's work on beating. Tip the bowl slightly and hold the spoon so the edge scrapes the bowl and bring it up through the mixture and over with a long quick flop to the opposite side. Under and up through again, lifting the spoon out of the mass and cutting clear through, scraping the bottom with every stroke. If you haven't thought that deeply about beating, don't worry, Mrs. Lincoln has done it for you. One cup of water, great. Then it calls for the grated rind and juice of one lemon. I absolutely love zest. Mmm, makes you feel strong. Bloop. And the juice of one lemon. Now that you've got your zesty, lemony, eggy water, it's time to move on to the next step. So in this bowl, we'll be preparing our one cup of sugar and two tablespoons of flour. And now we combine. Shoot. Here we go. Next, we're going to take our mixture and cook it in the double boiler until it is smooth like cream. Our beloved Mrs. Lincoln has a thing or two to say about boiling. In fact, she has seven pages worth of things to say about boiling. Boiling water, which is really cooked water, is the liquid usually employed. Water, as it's heated from below, expands into vapor. Okay, you know what? I think we're good to move on. Adding our beautiful lemony goo to the top. Then grab our whisk. We wanna be stirring this continuously as it reaches its double boil so it can start to become smooth. So it looks to me like this lemon jelly is smooth like a cream. Let's take it off the heat and set it aside to cool. As our jelly cools, it's time to make the frosting. Now, the frosting is pretty simple. It only has three ingredients. One egg white, some lemon juice, and some powdered sugar. Let's do it. Put the egg and lemon juice in a bowl, and now we stir the sugar in gradually. You know, I'm not gonna lie, those instructions on beating are actually kinda helpful. And five to 10 minutes later, check out the consistency of this frosting. It's light, it has some soft peaking. Frankly, I think it looks pretty good. Now that we've finished our frosting and our lemon jelly, let's see if our cakes have stopped hissing. Now it's time to assemble our cake. The first step to layering is to take everything out of the pan. 
Huzzah! We will very carefully place it on our cake dish. Now we'll take the first layer of light cake and add our lemon jelly to the top. I'm personally a big fan of lemon, so I'm gonna give this a healthy heaping. Next, our layer of chocolate. It's a magic show now. We'll take our chocolate layer and gently place it on top. Beautiful. Now, you guessed it, another layer of lemon jelly. Now, another layer of the light cake. Add this to the top. This is fun. I get why people did this. Our next layer of jelly. And our final layer, the pink. Ooh, the color really turned out beautifully with this. And to think that mere moments ago, these were bugs. Bugs! Okay, beautiful. Now that you got your layers stacked, it's time to do the frosting. Spoiler alert, this is gonna get messy. I did check Mrs. Lincoln's cookbook to see if there are any specific instructions about how to spread frosting or layer a cake. There were none. Yeah, hey, whoop. <laughs> Whoa, okay, it's okay. Oh, Mrs. Lincoln, I need you now more than ever. You know, a big part of baking is knowing when to stop, which is now, I'm stopping. I'm stopping, I'm stopping. There, that is the end of the instructions. Okay, I'm gonna assume that we should set this aside to cool so that the frosting can set before we enjoy it. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. Well, here we are. I'm pretty excited to see if this recipe takes the cake. Okay. Oh, it's so pretty. I feel the eyes of Mrs. Lincoln on me. There we go. Nicely done. Here it comes. Ah. <gasps> She's beautiful. This cake looks truly stunning. But the real question is, how does it taste? Okay, here we go. Just unhinge my jaw. That's cake. It's a little dry, but that's why they served it with tea. Okay, now that I can talk, wowza, delicious. A delicious, dense, rich cake. I love this. Okay, let me taste this part specifically to see if the cochinelle has any flavor to it. Nope, thank God. The lemon curd comes through so beautifully. The powdered sugar gives it just a little bit extra sweetness. Cheers to Mrs. Lincoln, because this cookbook took the time to educate and inform. Sure, it might have been a little over the top, but the message and the meaning is there, which is that anyone can bake so long as they have this cookbook and follow it precisely to a T. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Edible History. Did this episode take the cake? Let us know in the comments below.